So here we go. So now it's time. Now it's time. Yes. So the thing is, first of all, everybody already say they are so excited. They are so I don't know. Yeah, and uh, they put us in a situation <laughs> that I first I don't understand. Okay, people. Yeah, first need to understand that we are like like normal people we are not something very special we only we only teach something that maybe not everyone teaches and that is the only thing okay and now it's your turn yes so Zhang Shifu thank you first of all for for making it possible today that we can have this conversation and yeah, hello also to, to everybody who is joining right now. I think I won't make the introduction too long for all of you who don't know yet who is Grandmaster Zhang Yushan. He is a 33 generation Shaolin uh, master and he's been living for 30 years in Taiwan and studying different um, areas also including the traditional Chinese medicine and different Kung Fu styles. And if you have followed me before, you heard that I was searching for advice also, and also was interested to learn from Grandmaster Zhang Yushan. And therefore, I would suggest this session today, what is it about? It is about that all of you who are following any type of Qigong practices or anything before, Let's just listen to another perspective that maybe you haven't heard about Qigong before and what this Shaolin temple is, is about and what the Shaolin arts are about. So therefore, uh, Jiang Shifu, I think I will just hand it over to you and feel free to share whatever you like to share. Yeah, first of all, every, everybody, yeah. uh, nice to, to be here. Okay, that is... In that platform, for me, this is the first time. And uh, yeah, I, I will say as, as a dinosaur, when it comes to, to, uh, to the internet and also how it works or on, on, the, uh, on the medias here, uh, I'm a little bit excited too. Uh, excited to be here with you, all of you. And uh, I think, I don't know if people can see me or not because I can't see myself on your screen. Okay, that, that is also, I need to understand. Can you see me, Mr. Shrihami? Can you see that? Can I you see me? All, all is fine, yes, I can see you. Yeah, but I can't see myself on the screen. That is a little bit for me. Oh. Okay, that's, yeah, I don't know because there are some other people inside and uh, I don't know what to do. We just start, I will say, okay? So first of all, first of all, uh, mm, everyone is excited to to hear us talking about different kind of topics in the field of martial arts, qigong, or other Chinese culture methods. Okay, um, the thing is that people they have already their kind of uh, imagination. Imagination means that people, they, they ex, uh, expect something. First of all, we both, we are not chi Chinese people, okay? And people, they put us in a kind of position where they think mm, we, are, we, are, um, we are Shaolin disciples and we also need to live like that. Or <laughs> because, <laughs> because everyone have a different kind of imagination how a Shaolin martial art practitioner or how a Shaolin martial art um, disciple or a warrior monk should live. For you, you, you build that Shaolin temple in Europe for, for quite a long period of time. You put a big effort in, in this kind of project and you put yourself also in very deep depth uh, uh, financially wise. People should understand that and they also need to know that actually uh, it is a struggle for all these years what you have done with your uh, with your approach and and also uh, how your lifestyle is. 
for me, for example, I already I already went through where you go where you are now, and I left that kind of stage. I left that kind of stage like I I don't want to promote the Shaolin Temple because the uh, I, because I already left that kind of being a monk, being this kind of um, living this kind of path because for me. Uh, it is still not time to be like that kind of person. I also go through every life struggle, and that is that is for sure. I have I have my life situations that I need to I need to master. I have my partnership situations that I need to master. I have my struggle, my contradictions, and all the problems which comes with it. So for me to be. Uh, to be a martial art practitioner, a fighting monk, or especially uh, first a human being. The first thing is we need to go through the daily life, I would say, actions and reactions. When I, when I decide to go a different path, like I left that kind of Shaolin, Shaolin monk, uh, I would say, world, I was there for a period of time, and then I left it. I, I feel much more easier to live because there is a lot of experience, what we need to experience in life, that, um, that people, when they decide to live that kind of, I would say, celibate life, uh, where you don't have any re, uh, uh, contact with the female part in life, then you should behave totally differently. But for me, that is a different thing in my life. I went through to understand more, to understand myself more, even though with, uh, with all these problems, what I was facing. I was married, okay, I have kids, so I know how does it feel to, to be loved and how does it feel to receive I will say the coldness of love, because love is not only thinking by yourself, it is also giving, and this is now the situation in life where our generation, they only think about themselves. People, they are much more on the ego, ego trip, we will say like that, okay? But that, first of all, we need to, we need to learn more about ourselves. We need to see how we can handle different kind of life situations and then how to develop our spiritual part and how to develop our spiritual part is a part also in my life because these things uh, it is very difficult to share with your life partner because uh, not everyone understand how your lifestyle is okay the thing is actually why i pop up recently through these three years, I will say, is, um, is because of the videos which are published from the VAVA team. And actually, people, they had the, the kind of uh, different, different kind of approach in the martial art way. Because as a martial artist, and you practice for a long time, you need to understand that sometimes you hit a wall a kind of level where you can't um, develop much more yourself. Then in the Shaolin or in the Wudang part, people, they already figure out that they only need to depend on themselves because these kind of institutions, Shaolin Temple, Wudang Shan, or whatever, Kunlun Shan, and all these kind of, uh, I will say, uh, monasteries, they, their knowledge is limited by themselves and maybe we don't have access to the traditional old style martial art, what we actually like to seek. We have the, the media, this internet, social media, and we have this master, what I call U2B. The U2B master, where everyone likes to show something, everyone likes to, likes to uh, I would say, uh, promote his martial art, even if he uh, learn less, and uh, it, is, it doesn't matter. It gives a chance for people to 
scratch on the surface of martial art. Then we have a lot of practitioners, they focus on applicable martial art. We have the fighters in boxing, kickboxing, zambo, and all these grappling arts, what is already, uh, we call that also MMA, where people, they deny or learn how to see martial art in a different way. Because people now in today's society, they don't trust Chinese Kung Fu anymore. It is not because of the Chinese Kung Fu by itself. It is for the practitioners which deliver the art and the skill to the, to the masses. And what we can see even that the Shaolin monks like you and me and others around the world, like in America, in Europe, and even in the Asian India area, people, they learn from other martial artists in YouTube. Okay, in the YouTube channels. That leads to contradictions, that leads for difficulties and questions for each martial artist by himself. In one hand, we promote that we are we are we have an expertise in the martial art, what we are doing. But actually, as I can see, I have also these kind of called APP, where you can see who is following you secretly, who is stalking you, who is checking on you. And I figure out there are Shaolin masters from India, America, even the Asians, that they're already learning, seeking, and teaching what I have. Okay, they only, they only trans, trans, transmit the knowledge in their own language and promote that this is by the stuff from themselves. Actually, this leads for, for all martial artists, they do and live in that kind of way, it leads to a certain problem. The problem is that they are lying to themselves. And as you lie to yourself, your inner, your inner, I will say, development will have in stagnation. So that's why when when I try to to teach something and I, I I give something out, I always need to emphasize where the source of the knowledge is coming from. And maybe maybe when I say it very directly, that some other masters, so-called masters, are making things up. And uh, then, then I can see that as a Shaolin or as a Kung Fu practitioner for the experience more, the, the, the nearly, nearly uh, I would say 90% of my life. Yeah, I, I can see that what, what they are doing and what they are talking, these are two different shoes. So you have the masters, they write books. You have the masters, they talk in lessons. And you have the masters, they, they only, uh, I would say, live in the, in the fantasy world. Okay. Of course, we have, we have also truly masters. They still exist, yeah? but they are really, really in the world. Okay. So when I, when I sometimes point something out, it is not that I want to attack, attack these people personally. Even if it sounds like that, my intention is to let all the audience, the seekers, the students who wants to learn something, approach the right way of learning. And the right way of learning, what is that? It first follows when you want to learn something that you need to understand what is the, the clearance of seeing or observing. So when you observe first, you will approach already the right way of learning. So when you see a kind of certain master, you can, you can see him, how he moves, how he talks, and how actually what is very important in the field in our martial art world is the ability what he inhibit. If somebody say what he got and uh, what he practice and what he teaches, and in the other way, he doesn't fulfill the requirements, what he's talking about, then the student or the seeker, I would say, needs to observe very clearly. 
sometimes you can see and sometimes you see something but you doesn't really observe what is going on so for 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 us for example uh, i can if i can speak english much more better i can i can i can pack every martial art uh, i will say knowledge theory and uh, philosophies in a very beautiful way but it doesn't mean that i really grab that that doesn't mean so so we need to face what i always say the reality and the really the the the, the truth in life that when you when you teach something you don't hold something in your hand like other teachers are doing that they, they're telling the telling their student i teach you this kind of method but the real thing i don't show you because my my imaginable master because maybe there is no one uh, show me show me the right way and i don't it's not a lot for me to teach you Okay, so that is actually that is actually uh, uh, it, it will create problems and and these problems ne uh, became inner conflicts for these teachers. It also become conflicts uh, for the student because it's like I give you some beautiful um, a meal and I only can say you can smell it but you can't eat it. Okay, and you're starving. Okay, that is that is nearly the same, and that is I feel I think very cruel. So in my way, when I when I like to teach something, I like to show something, I I teach what I have. First, that is very important. And if somebody want to want to learn and see these kind of things, people need to ask in the correct way. Okay, and that is that is for the martial art how I see it, how the situation is that people they actually uh, they pretend, they analyze. We have masters of analyzing martial art. We have masters of theory. They only live in theory parts, and then we have masters they translating book from Chinese into English, and become and then become famous for that. But when you see these kind of masters, when they wrote a book 20, 30 years ago, and, uh, and when you see how they are moving and how they are acting and how they are, have the ability, they didn't change anything. There is no any progression in their field of martial art or even in the field of abilities. And that is what we are seeking for. Okay, everybody wants to have a little bit this human human powers, you know. Uh, yeah, that is that that makes a little bit. Uh, that, that is actually our goal. How far our body can go. Without hurting ourselves or without hurting the students, because the students they put their their life, their sweat the movements, the devotion to their masters. And sometimes devotion can blind people. So learn to observe. Learn through experience and learn first by imitating the teacher. And when you learn that by imitating first, then after a certain period of time, you can be your own master. Okay, that is very important. But the basics, the fundamentals, we need, we need to be sure that the fundamentals needs to provide with profound knowledge. That is important. So that we can grow together. When you see how a student react totally differently in the martial field, for example, we are teaching Qigong, Neigong. Yeah? Uh, and you, you see, every everybody is a different person because everyone is unique in their way. I said that already one time. Everyone is unique and everyone is a winner because you're the one who penetrate who penetrate that kind of I will say uh, 
the the female egg when you're when you're born you're the you're the winner already when you because you're you're the one achieved that okay yeah that is that is actually we need to understand that everyone is unique and everyone have different abilities but certain abilities every human can reach like the ability to talk and to read and to and uh, to to use uh, math, for example, everyone have the abilities. Abilities when I think if he all when he got his mind together, when he he got no psychological problems and even uh, I will say uh, physical problems, yeah, everyone can achieve certain kind of abilities. Okay, that is actually only what I want to say. I talk a lot, and. I need one second. Yeah, give me, give me one second, and I apologize for my not uh, for for my poor English. I need to say that if somebody don't understand, yeah, uh, I don't care. <laughs> First, but I still need to apologize for my poor English. I need to load my telephone so the people in the IG and in the Instagram they still can have a chance to to hear what we are talking about. Give me a second. Yes, and not sure if, ah, yes. I also noted down some of the questions that you were putting into the group. So maybe later in this talk, I will also be able to, to ask the Grandmaster some of these questions if you're interested in. But until then, I would really can only suggest you Sometimes I like to use nice words sometimes because it makes the entrance easier for many of the people. So. But nevertheless, yes, Grandmaster is back. Yeah, I'm here. I was just thinking about something, Jiang Shifu, that maybe you can also share your view on it because I grew actually up as a martial artist. So when I started very early in age, the first 20 years, definitely it was all about the Kung Fu training and the martial arts. So meaning the, the practices to really learn how to use your body and yeah, to say it uh, harshly, also meaning to know how to destroy another body. But meanwhile, now in the last 10 years, I would say that my view upon this has changed uh, a little bit. And the reason why many of the practices that have been shared in all the, the last years, they were mainly, so, um, or mainly practices aiming on the health benefits. So this is why I think that many, many people that are watching right now, maybe they, they still don't really understand that all the time it was about health. And now how come that you and me, we are now talking about the, the Kung Fu training or the martial arts. So therefore, can you please just share your view a little bit? How do you see this connection? What nowadays people understand as that is the Kung Fu training and a part of this Kung Fu training is also the Qigong training, which is made uh, partly available to the public nowadays. So, oh, okay. The, we, need to, we need to understand that um, in the Asian way, in the Asian way how to approach, uh, I will say, the knighthood. Yeah? You know, the knight, yeah? the warriors. Okay. That uh, in, the, in the Asian way, you need to train first of all your physical body. Your physical body with, which incorporates uh, exercises, okay, and also weapon hand, handling, yeah. so that you can first, you can first uh, have the ability to protect yourself and protect others from harm. In the other way, to, to be assured that your body machine works fluently and correctly, we also need to emphasize a lot of, I would say, energy, energetic trainings. 
and the energetic trainings. We have them in India. They do the pranayam. They do different kind of yogic exercises, and they do the warrior fighting abilities. That is in Asia, and uh, in in the Western world, there was there were, there were actually only much more physical. And this this we can see already today. We have the MMA fighters where they don't know that. Uh, when you train all the time, hardly, and under, uh, I would say, competition mode, or competition level, that one day you will burn out yourself. So you need to have the balance. This balance, the Asian already understood. So that means they understood that you need also have the restoring time, the preparing time, this time where you also learn how to develop different kind of uh, organs. And one of the organs, what we need to develop is the respiratory system. Because through, through breathing, we can, we can accumulate energy. Of course, through a different kind of diet, when we live and eat healthy, we also can have a different kind, uh, better, better quality kind of I would say energy in our body. Okay, and and what we what we are doing is is we emphasizing that Chinese martial art and the health I would say the medicine aspect they are together. You can't separate them. So when you practice hard style kung fu, you need to practice also uh, the energetic part. We say that in Chinese, Wai Lian Jing Wu Pin, Ne I Kou Qin. That means Wai Lian Jing Wu Pin means outside you, you train your tendons, your muscles, and your bones. And internally, you, you take a big breath of air. That is actually what we are doing. Okay. And for example, just a second. <laughs> I think my Instagram is already dead, but they can follow in another way. The thing is actually that uh, Chinese Kung Fu without Chinese medicine, medicine means Qigong practices, Qigong Negong practices, energetic practices, uh, and also uh, the intake of external and internal herbs, the correct diet, is very crucial that we need to put them together. So even there are some Kung Fu martial arts schools, they never heard about Qigong in their martial system inside. That is not their fault. That is the fault of the teacher who, who transmit that. I said that already. That is the fault of how you want to give that to the foreign student. And in the 70s, or I would say in the, in the uh, 1950s, yeah, to the 70s and the 80s, we had a lot of Chinese martial art masters. They went abroad and they, they went to America, they went to the Europe, okay? And uh, uh, they was teaching something, what they have learned. And maybe their own practice wasn't enough. Their own approach of learning martial art were also limited in the one way. In the other way, they want always to dominate in front of the Westerners. So the internal things and internal stuff, they don't want to give that away. They only give them the external uh, moving in forms and weapons and uh, all these kind of beautiful things what we, what we know now. Yeah? Uh, this is possible to give to the foreigners, but the internal aspect, uh, like calm sitting and breathing, what we call meditation, okay, and different kind of uh, breathing exercises and movement, what we call qigong or nei, uh, nei dan gong. This this kind of knowledge, uh, I will say, recently in the in the nineties where step-by-step step coming to the Western. 
for me for example when i was when i was uh, learning a different kind of martial arts style even chinese kung fu style immediately i was i was i was banned i was i was stuck in that in that slow movement and the breathing movements of the qigong exercises when i saw that the first time i said i want to learn this because i was not interested in in the forms because uh, for me as as a young man i was already very early involved in wrestling judo taekwondo and thai boxing kickboxing that was actually the 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 80s in in germany where you need to be equipped as a young teenager with with these kind of skills so the fighting uh, fighting part i was not very interested in in i was more interested in how to develop the energetic part because even as a young man you can feel that when you do and when you move your hands there is something that you can't explain okay yeah that feeling that feeling as a young man was actually the true feeling because i i for for my for my inner in a heart and my inner inner voice told me that is you need to have if you have access to this kind of knowledge that is a destiny but if you really like to have something in your life your wish can come true because that belongs to the mind and the mind is over the body and mind can reach every fulfillment okay so that is also that is also when you put pureness and dedication to your approach you can really reach everything you can become a good person when you have a good behavior and a good speech you you can become what you speak when you tell yourself that you're good for nothing you also can become good for nothing so people should learn how how to speak in the correct manner okay chinese kung fu and chinese i would say health methods are going hand in hand you can't separate them you can't what you actually also figure out many years ago that qigong is actually uh, a a path that you like to walk in there how long you do that already and can i ask yes so like i said with the age of 4 i started initially almost 20 years only practicing the kung fu forms as they were taught by my masters at that time and i got introduced to the bad wan jin forms actually pretty early already but it never caught my attention i have to say because the movement in the beginning were just too slow for me and i couldn't really understand what should be the purpose because i felt young and i felt powerful so i said no i i want to have the moves where i can express this power more and i didn't find a way what should these slow movements bring me but I can't tell you how but there was one time when I saw a performance from one Shaolin master I think he was performing a uh, rou chuan yeah it looks similar to a tai chi chuan form but it's coming like from the Shaolin temple and it looked to me like I was lacking something that there was that he was just much finer in the way how he was moving he had much more control over over his body himself and so i started the investigation what is it that he is using there what is it that he's pay, uh, placing his attention on and then this was the time where again the word qigong and breath work started to pop up and there i started my own small studies about what does it mean the qigong and how can i apply it for my practice of the martial arts and since that time 
which is now almost 18 years, I am still on the path of finding out more what this Qigong has for potential. And also lately, just the time now, uh, learning also the different methods from you, they again opened up quite uh, another perspective. And I can only emphasize, and also once again to everybody who's really now listening, Yeah, I also hit that plateau where I felt like I cannot proceed anymore. And so I was watching out also who is at the moment able, uh, who, is, um, who is there in this world right now that I could visit, that I could learn from. And this was the point where I also started to travel the world a little bit to find different teachers, watch into the different systems and this is more or less for everybody to know how I ended up meeting Zhang Yushan. And again, what happened is that by watching the way how you are performing, for example, your practices, I feel that you got something that in myself at the moment, it's not developed yet in that type of quality. And therefore, I also often, often heard about my teachers in the past that it's important to know the methods. Yeah, but this is something which is very, very hard to get uh, in, in, in nowadays society. You have a lot of variety of what you are able to practice, but sometimes it's not the correct method. And yeah, this is one thing where I actually trusted very much in, in, in your approach. And as I can tell by myself, just uh, following the practices and the guidance that you give me, uh, I feel the difference and I can feel that things are growing again. Yeah. And therefore, <laughs> and therefore this is what, uh, yeah, that is the igniting spark that I would like that more people in this world are also starting to, to get into the essence and to understand that some of these methods, they are not about how beautiful they look because the methods sometimes can be very exhausting. They can be very painful to a certain extent. But meanwhile, I really trust that saying that Kung Fu means you are walking through the valley of pain. And if you don't walk through this valley of pain, I don't think there will come any type of sustainable uh, sustainable development and this is now one question that I also got from this community that is sometimes asking me because there's so much of the so-called soft style qigong which looks very effortless but what is your thought Jiang Shifu when it really comes to basically sweating how important do you consider sweating and really having difficulties to focus on the mind? So you need to concentrate. So how much effort do you really need, even if it looks very effortless, even the soft style Qigong forms? So maybe. Okay. Um, sweating actually is one of many different kinds of sensations, what we call in, in, in the Chinese term qi gang, gan jie, a feeling, a sensation. And to develop heat in the body and also a sweating, yeah? when the pores are open, the skin wants to, wants, to, wants to open, wants to breath, also wants to breathe also. Yeah? That is one of the first sensations what we can achieve very easily. Okay, you can, you don't, you don't need to move in certain kind of patterns, for example, in the Chinese way. Even when you have a walk and when you combine that walk in the, in the forest, in the park, yeah, with a different kind of rhythm breathing, you will develop heat. And that heat is actually, uh, that is only the first sign of 
developing energy, you know, like a, like a machine, like a steam machine, you know, like uh, like, like what we had in, in the early times of the uh, industrialization here around the world, okay, as a steam engine. You, know? you need to you need to understand that there's only one feeling, one sensation, which called chikan. If you have heat and warmness and uh, and uh, we, we go into the forest and you, you talk about, oh, feel the energy, feel the chi, feel the mountain, feel the river, feel the forest, feel the nature, that is very beautiful. That is one kind of part where you use your imagination. Very important. But you also need to understand the fundamentals of Qigong. The fundamentals of Qigong, what actually Qigong means is breath exercise, the work of the breath. And you need to understand yeah, uh, that you need to learn first how to develop your breathing apparatus. That is the first thing. How to develop it without injuring your alveoles, your lung system how to develop the inhale and exhaling without having inflammation in the throat. You know, there we have the, we have a different kind of Japanese karate practitioners. They, they do this kind of uh, sanshin kata uh, or sanzan kata. They, they actually want to use a kind of breathing method, which called Sidzaho, the lying throat. But instead of the correct usage of this Sidzaho, they use the throat. They, do, they use this. That will lead for a different kind of inflammation in the throat. It can even lead to chronic inflammations and the chronic inflammations can lead to cancer. When you combine that with uh, unhealthy, I would say, uh, lifestyle like smoking and drinking hot, hot, hot uh, beverages like whiskey and vodka and all these kind of things like the Asians do, then you will reach uh, maybe your 40 or 50 age and then you will, you will leave that kind of, uh, I would say, you will leave that kind of world. This what is happening in the martial art circle in Japan, that Japan have no real grandmaster anymore. Okay. One of the great grandmaster, we will say what Japan had is the master Oishiba or this master Oyama. Then we have one or two masters from the Goju Ryo. They're still alive. Okay. And that's it. These are the masters, but the real grandmasters we don't have. Okay. Even you can see this master, uh, um, what is it? What is his name? A good real master where he's hitting the stone and everything, but you never see him something breaking. Okay, how to really emphasize and also show where the and how the energy can be transmitted to a certain kind of object. Hitting a stone is easy when you have a certain kind of hand, but to developing these energy levels, this is a little bit different. So that's why I say Japan have no grandmaster anymore. They're already gone. So you need to learn how to use your breathing and also how to, when you accumulate energy, that is important that we need to learn how to accumulate energy, how to use that energy for certain purposes. It can be the healing purposes where you use that kind of energy development to treat your, uh, your clients when you have a clinic for example. Or you want to you want to uh, you want to test yourself. You want to show off yourself how far your energy can can be transmitted, and then you break some stones because we don't want to break somebody's uh, bones when we when we train martial arts. Okay, that is also one kind of approach. To be healthy is important when you practice Chinese martial art or martial art in general that you can practice for a long time. Even, even we have in the Western world, we have some martial art practitioners. When I, when I say martial art practitioners, then I mean these 
old school wrestlers, the catch wrestlers, for example, Hackenschmidt yeah, and Karl Gotch, they become very old and also still very healthy. But these are very few of them. Okay. So, because they change, they understand already their, their lifestyle, they understand already how the diet works, and they understand what to practice and what not to practice. And mostly, mostly what we have now is people, they, are, they want to learn the, the Neigong without understanding what is the Qigong. And that, that, is, that will be also promoted. Yeah? Immediately somebody say, I want to learn, I'm doing the Neigong, you do the Qigong. Okay? Like 10 years ago, if you want to practice martial art, yeah, or you, you're a Kung Fu practitioner, you can find the people, they say, I do internal martial art, and they put themselves in a very high uh, platform, and then you do the external martial art. They put you very low, but they put you down. Ah, oh, you do the fighting. For me, I don't want to do that. That is not correct. That is not the correct approach. Because when we see the Tai Chi Grand Masters in the old times, they had names, for example, the undefeatable, the invisible. For example, the, from the Yang family, Yang, Yang Lu Chan, his nickname was the invisible man. Okay, the invisible Yang Lu Chan. That means he know how to fight. And he did it a lot, okay? But later it was promoted as a health training exercise. And the people, they changed already the point of view only because they don't want to lose something in their life. So if you want to learn Chinese martial arts, Qigong in general, you need to understand how to breathe. You need to know how to exhale first before you learn how to inhale. The diet is important. Then you put it into your actions, into your physical actions. You need to learn some self-defense movements because you need to protect yourself from the weather, from outside influences so you can't get sick. That is the first protection. Outside influences can be uh, the seasons, okay? And then you need to protect yourself from other outside influences. And these are people when they want to harm your body. So you need to learn how to protect yourself. So we don't need, and we can't forget that called Wu Shu. And the, and the term Wu means war. So it's actually an art form prepared for war. Qigong, we have White Dan Qigong and Nei Dan Qigong. They need to be learned in the profound way. So every martial artist need to understand you, if you want to be a profound martial artist, a well-round, you need to know how to protect yourself and you need to know how to develop your energy resources, accumulate, store them, and use them. That is important. So always what I say, for the people, they only want to do the Qigong. I only want to do the Qigong. Yeah, very good. You do the Qigong every day, but you can't do 20 push-ups. That makes no sense. You know, I mean, okay, that push-ups you can train, but actually my meaning is you train the Qigong, but your physical power, there, there is no balance. That kind of body machine will one day also not function very well. Because only energy, 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 yeah, and then for what? There is no, there is no, I would say, the balance. And there is also no a quite good resource. So you need to have some physical ability. You need to do some activities where, for example, you combine breathing techniques with physical exercise. So, so you have the psychological and energetic part, what you practice. Your mind is strong, your energetic part is strong, and 
your physical, your power, you know, your force also needs to be trained. And people need to understand you can't separate that. And if you want to be an expert in the martial field, you need to, you need to test this in different kinds of, I would say, stages. Now, Jiang Shifu, I think many people, they maybe didn't have the chance to start so early in age or they didn't even were interested to learn the martial arts in the beginning. So some of them are middle aged or maybe are 40, 50, 60 already, but because they like what they see, like the Qigong forms and all different types of soft style Qigong forms, let's just say somebody is not interested in fighting, is not interested in learning how to hurt another person, but nevertheless, how, nevertheless, how important do you think is it that it's not just about feeling the energy, but it is about that there needs to be the application of, yeah, once you have tapped into this area and you can feel something that somebody else maybe doesn't feel, but the question is, what are you going to do with the energy that you feel? So sometimes I heard uh, how you said it was, you need to find a way to express this energy. So how does a Qigong practitioner, let's say somebody is practicing already for one year a form, he practiced for two years a certain form, how does he know that he is making progress? So how can he test himself? So what are like the real world applications that he knows this training is giving me something? and not just something imaginary. So not just about, I can feel the energy, but what is the expression of this energy? So if you, for example, not interested in the fighting art, okay, and you want to have that as a healthy art, then you, you need to find, what I say, a balanced exercise, which is appropriate for your body condition. Take a stroll in the park, go to the, uh, go hiking, walking in the forest. These can be different kinds of activities where you can, you can practice your physical body, which is very healthy. Including you do some different kinds of exercise where you're stretching and uh, do the inhaling and exhaling, stretching like the forms in the Qigong forms. Okay, so that is actually, I will, I will always recommend for people, they want to have the health part, they should do the soft Qigong first. They should learn how, how to sit and be calm first, so that they can clear your, their mind, that they can, they can clear and clean their body with breathing methods. As in, as in balance, they can go into the forest and take a walk in the park, or even they can, I don't know, walk around their, their home, yeah, walk in circles like the Bhagavatam practitioners, what they're doing. But then they can't call themselves martial artists. Then they can call themselves health art practitioners. So what I said before about the, the master's the, the, the martial art masters, they're doing the Qigong and all these kind of things, but they can't call themselves martial artists because they don't put it in the test. They have a certain, they put themselves in a, a certain kind of uh, pedestrian level. They, they put themselves very high, but they can't really, I would say, uh, stand for what they are talking about. They only need to change and also need to be clear about themselves. That's facing the truth. Only fighting is also not enough because as a martial artist, we need to know the philosophy, a different kind of cultural arts, like we drink the tea now, okay? That is the Chinese way of drinking tea. Yeah, uh, human uh, the, the, the way how to treat others, breathing techniques and self-defense. Or you call that acrobatic movements, okay? 
That is another thing. But the normal person who only wants to devote himself for, for the health aspect to restore or to keep his energy level, he shouldn't call himself martial artist. He can call himself a health art. Health artist, I would say like that. A health art practitioner. What actually also exists, for example, we, we should train our physical body. We should train our, our, our self that it will reflect the energy inside you, will reflect outside. So the state, how you feel internally, if you are if you are energetic, full and clean, you will reflect that to the external. It will go out on your behavior. On your behavior, how you speak to certain kind of people. On the behavior, how, to, how, how you treat certain kind of people. And also, you can see that very clearly, on the reflection on the animals. Because animals, they don't lie. They don't put the face and the fake face on you. So when you see a, a certain kind of person and when he approaches animals or children, you can immediately see how these kind of animals approaching you, loving you by the first sight, or bargaining and attacking you by the first sight. You can see that very clearly, especially by the, uh, uh, we, we are dog society, okay, everybody had a dog, a cat, these kind of pets, yeah, and uh, you can, you can actually, you can actually see that by these kind of animals, because they don't lie to you. People can lie to you. In front of you, they approach you with a smile, and when you turn around, they, they're backstabbing you with a knife, okay? So that is one kind of reflection what you can see. In the other way, when you are full of energy, you are attracted to people, they are lacking of energy. They are looking around for you because they want to be next to you. These, what we call the energy vampires. Because they have too less energy, they are looking for someone who is who, who inhibits an amount of energy, and he can share that. These kind of people we also can see, especially you know that. You know that. You have certain kind of people, they're always next to you because they feel good when they're next to you. They feel, they feel comfortable. They feel, they feel also, they receive your energy because themselves they are lacking of energies. Okay, when you practice certain kind of, I would say, bioelectricity, you will develop bio, biomagnetism. And that biomagnetism will attract others. Okay, and they will actually feeding themselves from your kind of energy. So now we come to that kind of part where people say, hey, that is not really with the science. There is something the science can't even explain. Okay, and that is actually that is actually what what we can we can see by ourselves that you're spreading the love around you. That is for sure because there is nothing strongest as as I know than the love and the hate energy. Okay, we need to know that both exist. Huh? Love and hate are together because from love can become hate, and from hate become love. Okay, very quickly. Okay. And actually, you can, you practice your accumulation of Qigong and A Gong, and you can see it in your surrounding. People are attracted to you. People like to find you. They like to be with you. Animals and children, they feel comfortable and safe with you. And this is actually a good sign 
how strong your energy internally reflects externally. The mood what you have internally will also have the result externally. When you are internally very depressed, you have anxiety and all these kinds of things, you will also attract these kinds of things. So your life situation uh, is not getting better. It's getting worse. And when you face certain kind of people with these kind of mood swings, depression swings, and all these kind of, I will say, uh, disorders, you need to be careful that you don't take that into your energy level or into your life. Don't let people's problem become your problem. Because you're not a garbage can that everybody can load up their emotions, moods, depressions, and psychological problems. You're not like that. That is really for sure. And we need to protect ourselves. That's why we're building the golden bell. Where these kind of influences can bounce away from us, can lead to different directions. When you do Tai Chi, you say you take it and you leave it away. But first, you need to take it. <laughs> and that, that is very difficult because some people, they only take. They can't lead it away. They can't yield it away. So these kind of people, what we are facing, because we are surrounded with a lot of people. You were in your monastery, there are a lot of people there approaching you. There are a lot of people in the internet, they are approaching you, they're asking you questions and, 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 and uh, their problems become your problems. We should be very careful with these kind of things. And if you are a good person, kind, and open, I would say, always open your arms for others. Don't let people using you as a garbage can. That is also very important. Protect yourself. And the energy what you develop will do that for you. That is guaranteed. How to know, how to feel the energy, how much you have. You can see that in your environment who is attracting you, how you treat animals and how animals treat you. That is one of the first signs. Now, for example, uh, yeah, I think I told you that Germany just went uh, or is about maybe to enter another another lockdown. Maybe they are, they are not sure yet. They don't know. Nevertheless, um, the restrictions are becoming stronger and stronger. And in the last two, three years, things have dramatically changed. So maybe I'm, I'm jumping a little bit right now because until now we talked a lot about the health practices, the martial art practices, the Qigong, the Kung Fu. But if I would have to express it in my words right now, it is, not, it is not my goal that I want to become good in Qigong and that's it. And I also don't want to become good in Kung Fu and that's it. It's just that I feel by practicing Kung Fu and by practicing the Qigong methods, it gives me a lot, a lot, a lot of either you call it energy or you call it the ability to stay balanced even so that the rest of the world at the moment seems to be like, uh, yeah, be out of balance or sometimes seems to be very, very restricted and it's difficult to keep your inner calmness or even to stay, yeah, I don't know, optimistic, to look into a bright future that doesn't look like a bright future. But nevertheless, at the moment, I have to say that there's not so much which can like bring me down. And for me personally, I think that this is because of the practice. It is because I found something in these practices that can balance me out. And that was the initial idea, actually, why I thought maybe more people 
if they get access to themselves or access to their own energies or however you call it. So meaning being able to feel better, what do you have inside there, that you can finally also start to train yourself in order to not be influenced by all these outside circumstances. Yeah, because if I would be influenced by the outside circumstances, then this monastery right now would never have survived the last three, four years. And for me, I think this is because of the practice. So my question is, how much do these practices like Kung Fu, like Qigong, actually, how can you use them in life? What is their relevance in in the life itself. Very easy. These kind of ways, when you practice them correctly, they will boost up our immune system. And we, as these kind of, uh, I will say, uh, practitioners, we should promote. We should promote that uh, these kind of ways will develop a strong immune system. We should also try to promote that uh, we don't need always, we don't need always depend on the, I would say, pharmacies and chemical agents. We can also promote through our practice, through our being, through our presence, the, I would say, the immune system and also, also the nature way of healing and surviving yourself. That should be actually very important. We should promote that our, for example, immune system can, can be trusted. That is very, very important. Why don't practice and why don't promote health methods instead of all these kind of injections? Why we don't trust in our human ability to fight against different kinds of diseases? Especially if this is a kind of flu, where the, the surviving rate is quite high. Why we don't do that? And that is the big question. Why the government media like to suppress these kind of, I will say, health methods. We can only assume that there is a reason. It's the money benefit reason for different kind of pharma pharmaceutical concerns. It's also the reason to have that kind of population control and so on. The New World Order has already begun many years ago. How to promote our immunology or immune system to fight for different kinds of diseases is actually key. Maybe this is our, our mission in life here. That's why our generation uh, practice these kind of methods. I hope all these kind of things, what I just talk about, find the correct person. That's it for today, I think, because I think the Shaolin Temple Yuba already is out of line. And now I'm coming to you. Here I am. So you can see actually, you can see actually that we can depend on ourselves. We can we can depend on ourselves and actually we, we should we should use our own abilities to fight against different kind of flu disease where actually this kind of disease. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is the internet. <laughs> okay. I, that is hilarious. 
I only can say that. Okay. And uh, that is actually the session and it's a live session, what we can see. And uh, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, that we should stick together, <laughs> stick together, okay, and uh, learn how, how to grow our, our vegetables by ourselves, to be independent. So if, the, if these kind of, I will say, restrictions comes where you can't buy anything anymore, where <laughs> so where you actually oh thank you very much where you actually where you actually you need to learn uh, where you actually actually can promote yourself <laughs> promote not promote yourself where you actually develop yourself to to grow your own food to understand what what to use in the herbal way to recover from different kinds of diseases. That should be and is crucial in life. Be independent from, I will say, from the masses. Of course, people, people already get used to, get used to the certain media, get used to, uh, listen and take everything for granted what they are serving us but actually deep inside your heart you understand that there is also another way okay and all these agendas what we are uh, what we are facing now you you go you go to the you 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 do the demonstration you go to the streets and they even don't care <laughs> They still continue. They don't care. They will enforce that. And uh, that is, we are facing now that kind of generation. What can we do? I will not promote a revolution aggressively. aggressively. I don't want to do that. Because then your target number one. I only like to promote and also spread out different kinds of knowledges where you can become stronger in your health system. That is actually very important. I just heard about I'm still I'm still on the YouTube channel. I need to check that out of YouTube. Let me check what is going on. So I think now the connection also went yeah. back. So I'm, I'm back again as well. Yeah. Okay. Here. Let yeah. me see where you are. <laughs> here you go. See where um, you maybe Jiang Shifu for yeah. to, to maybe also give them the people um, something practical in a way. What is the best thing that after they know now certain forms, they have maybe started practicing already, they started using different movements. And you were talking about that Qigong is very much related to the quality of breath. And so that means to train also how you are breathing. Now, can you maybe give them just one small tool one small exercise or one small tip what they should do in order at least to know if their respiratory system is in a good shape or if it's in a bad shape so how do they know if their respiratory system is a good one or is a bad one so is there anything that you can suggest or, or give them what I, what I can suggest is you need to you need to understand and you need to look observe yourself in your daily habits, that you don't interrupt the breathing pattern, where you have a calm and silent breath, where you close your mouth when you inhale. Because people, when they talk or when they walk, they use the open mouth. <sighs> they breathe like this. That is not appropriate. People first need to learn that they first, when they inhale, that they close your mouth. 
When they exhale, they can open and let the air out of the mouth until they are very firm in that and they're used in the nostril breathing method where you can inhale and exhale through the nostrils. That is first. In the other way, people need to observe themselves when they stop inhaling and exhaling. I give that good example, for example, for, for, for example, I told you once also, people, when they do certain kind of actions, they stop breathing, which I don't understand. For example, um, your shoelaces are open. You want, to, you want to make a knot in your shoelaces. Only by bending down and you knot your shoelaces, people already stop breathing. They, uh, they hold the breath. That is what I don't understand. These kind of actions, or you want to pick up, your keys are falling down in front of your door, and you want to pick up your keys from the floor. What are you doing? The first thing what you're doing, you, you hold your breath. <laughs> and then you pick up your keys. That is very funny. But observe yourself that during your daily activities that you don't have an interruption, uh, a stoppage of your breathing pattern. That is the first thing. And when you have that kind, my shoelaces are open, you can see that. And then by yourself, you can give the command where the mind, the mind is the leader, is the conductor, which conduct the energy. And the energy will move the body. So that is my shoelaces are open. I need to close them. I need to make a knot. You can first inhale and then you bend down and oh, you do your knot and you continue in and exhaling. Very easy. When you enter, when you open the door in the car and you enter your car, why you hold your breath? I'm asking you. Okay? Why are you doing that? Ask these questions by yourself, because then when you ask questions by yourself, you answer them immediately, you will change that kind of behavior. That is when I say, ask yourself, don't ask always as a person, where you always depend, yeah, how uh, you, you ask somebody, Master, how can I reach your, uh, how can I open your Facebook? Then I only look at you and say, how old are you? Figure it out by yourself. They ask me for each, I don't know, that kind of step where I only think, what is that? that uh, even the pooping there, I mean, how can I poop? Now do it, you will understand it by yourself. Okay? You know, I, I, I receive questions where I sometimes think, how old are you? I only give them right back, how old are you? Then they immediately, <laughs> like this. Because people, it's the same uh, when people face a disease. They immediately see a person in a white shirt, yeah, like a white uh, doctor clothes. And then they always do, here's my body. Do what you want. Give me the medication. No, use your brain first. Investigate, learn, look around for different kinds of methods, how you become stronger, how you become healthy. And if you want to learn something, don't blindly follow the teacher. Don't put that teacher in that kind of position. Because the teacher maybe doesn't want to be in that position. It's the broad mess who put us in that kind of position. And when we don't fulfill their requirements, they're very upset. So look first in yourself. When you do different kinds of actions, observe when you are holding the breath. When you open the window, mm, you, what are you doing? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. When you enter your car, when you knot your shoelaces, why you are holding your breath. 
That is the first aspect. In the other way, what I really like to say to all of our guests, please, ladies and gentlemen, don't put us in the kind of position that we maybe not fulfill your requirements. Because you was telling me one time, people, they figure out, hey, you're not Chinese. And the complete world broke down. When they figure out, hey, Master Sun Yi is actually from Vietnam. Yeah. What, you're not Chinese? Their whole imagination broke down. They left you immediately because their imagination and their expectations are totally different. They put you in a way where actually you don't want to be. We are still human, okay? But we like to promote something that can help our fellow humans. Promote, give, teach, tell people something, you listen it, you observe it, you, you experience it, and then you learn that. That is very important. Not by fantasy stuff. Think about first, observe the teacher. Know what you want first. Know what kind of method you want to approach and know the teacher. And all questions will be solved. And our position is only guide people for a certain period of time. And then bye-bye. Yeah. 10 years, 10 months. Okay. Then bye-bye. Walk by yourself. You're old enough. Be your own master after a certain period of studying the fundamentals. And learn to breathe naturally first. And then one day we will make a course where we go to the fundamentals of in and exhaling and the in and exhaling combined with movements. And also change the way of how you see the Qigong way. Because people already have that kind of YouTube vision, how people provide these kind of things. Yeah, that is already given, but we should change a little bit the approach. We should be also open for a different kind of approach. And we need to be aware of the people, they're always analyzing and we need to be aware of these people. They're always promoting something that they don't possess. And all these kind of things. I have something, but I don't teach it to you. No. If you are a teacher, you put yourself in that kind of expertise way, uh, way of life. And people like to follow you. You teach or you don't. Very easy. You do that correctly with no restrictions or stop it immediately. Then because then you are a hypocrite. You put yourself in a teacher's way. You teach what you have. Don't teach what you don't have. Don't make something up from mystery masters. The knowledge what you receive is not for the broad mass. That is nonsense. Don't talk only and make the analysis about different kind of uh, methods when you didn't experience these kind of things. That is also very important. If you want to experience different kind of sensations, for example, sweating is one, then you need to practice much more and you need to seek people they already went through these kind of experiences. Because you can learn only something from an experienced teacher who went already through that, who knows already what happened 
the good and the bad, so he can give you a, a better approach for that. That is very important, not only for the theory masters. They only talk good and didn't had any experience in their life. Of all, I will say very less. And you can see that very, very clearly. You can see that. And when I say Taiji push hands is only an ability that when you practice 10 years, 20 years, you should actually have, that is nothing. That is only a small ability. Yeah, maybe you can reach it in three, four years. It's already the same, but uh, it's not the magic. And it's not the high ability when you teach then Qigong only because you can push people around. That is a totally different thing. And if you can't reach these kind of abilities, don't jump into the magic. Use different kind of, I don't, I don't know, Scientology methods, hermetic methods, golden dawn methods, and I don't know, the TOT and uh, OTO, sorry, OTO methods, and, 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 and don't do that. Because then you drift away. Practicing and learning the occult is a part of Chinese martial art also. But don't misuse and use people with that kind of knowledge. It will come back to you and it will harm not only the surroundings, at least it will harm yourself. That's what I have to say for today. For the breathing, observe yourself on the daily basis. That is very important. And if you want to learn something, look for the correct method and look around what you really like to have. And for me, it is an honor that you find me and you swallow the way of how I teach. Because you know it's difficult and hard. You can feel that already, but you also feel the benefits. Even you just start. Am I right? Jiang Shifu, thank you very much for taking your time also to share all of your knowledge with the people. And yeah, I think it's also maybe good to say that we are trying to contribute something to this society. It's sometimes not so easy to find the right way, but there will come up some ideas in the future. And I think for the first time now that people just know um, we are thinking about them. It doesn't matter if uh, people like the way how some of us are talking, but there are methods that can help quite a lot of people and these methods, they are going to come out easy to find the right way, but there will come up some ideas in the future. And I think for the first time now, Yeah, and therefore I would say let's just for today close this session. And Thank you very much. I already, I'm already gone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Good. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. So, goodbye to you too. Goodbye to you, Zhang Shifu. So, I only need to know where I am now. So, close everything. Yeah.